I know that you said that it's okay to have like a conversation in this regard. So when did you start working at the hospital? In the summer of 2019. What was your job at the hospital? I was a security patrol officer. Well, what sort of risks did you face as hospital security when you first started? The mentally infirm, the victims of drive-by shootings, stabbings, domestic violence cases that would be brought to our front door and would still be ongoing. You you describe all, all these like encounters with people who came to the hospital. How frequently did, was this like every single night something happened or was there ever quiet nights? During the week, it was very rare that we would have issues. The drunks and the domestic violence stuff, that was usually on the weekends. You started working there in 2019 and COVID started popping around like in my memory, like it was January, February of 2020. So when did you first hear about COVID-19? I first heard about COVID-19 in December of 2019. You said that your boss, he gave you a heads up to it, but did you believe that COVID was actually going to make it to Canton, Ohio? I did. I very much did. When did the first case show up at your hospital? Our first confirmed case was at the end of March. 2020. What changed at the hospital when the pandemic was formally declared? A bunch of departments cleared out and non-essential personnel were laid off. And all of a sudden, this absolutely massive, life-filled hospital became a ghost town. And so, how involved was your department in the quarantine procedures? very involved. We had all of our elevators turned them over to being manually operated. There had to be a security officer in every elevator to operate it. There had to be two security officers assigned to every COVID positive patient that had to be transported interdepartmentally. What did you see firsthand that the public and the media wasn't seeing? All the local colleges were closing down and they were housing our nurses. Restaurants, coffee shops, Free food was almost everywhere. I, I recall just like news feed after news feed of how so many businesses were struggling. And yet also you hear news of like these struggling businesses going out of their way to continue to help despite any sort of money issue, which like is a very heartwarming thing to look back upon. Yeah, there's also the other half of that question, the thing that people weren't witnessing that they could not show in the media was the people dying. The process was to put you on a ventilator and then send you to the ICU. So we were part of the patient transporting. So they would call us and be like, look, as soon as we get this person on a ventilator, you've got to get them to the room. So we would be on standby right outside that room waiting. So all of the rooms have windows into the patients. So you'd just be standing there in the hallway, dead weight, watching a medical team try to put someone on a respirator. And quite a few people died in the process of the respirator going in. The other half of that process, which is family members dying. Family knows this and they're at the doors and they want to go say goodbye and they're not allowed to. But we were the ones keeping those people from saying goodbye. I want to say this before we continue that like, at the end of the day, it's not your fault. Doesn't change that it happened. Doesn't make it any better. Doesn't make it any worse. It just is the reality. Did violence in the hospital increase or decrease during the pandemic? Use of force is what we defined it as, and use of force was increasing on all campuses. Everybody was fed up. It was just manifesting as violence. Look at the summer of 2020, all the protests that were happening. They happened downtown. We could see downtown from the helipad. We watched all the smoke clouds drifting off of downtown Canton as they tear gassed the protesters down there. It was bad. Is there anything you would like to say to the viewer or listener before we're done? I want this country to view empathy and kindness not as weakness, but as strength. Because the road I see the United States headed down is a road filled with bloodshed. We need to start empathizing, sympathizing again, because this whole screw you, I got mine mentality, that is unsustainable. We need to stop getting in people's faces, cutting off people because of this, that, and the other reason, creed, religion, orientation. Stop. Be kind. Because if we're not, we will get none in return when it's too late.